Welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Uh, as usual, we'll start off with looking at the overview of the laser. And today we're going to start to combine, and I promised we'd do this, uh, the gain medium we've spent so much time on back with the cavity mirrors. And so our laser, of course, consists of some gain medium, which we can write differential equation for, and cavity mirrors, which we know to be stable, and we know the radius and spacing of these determine some point on the stability curve. Uh, we know the cavity creates a Gaussian beam, and we can write equations for that. We can predict what beam is going to be formed, and that's determined by the cavity mirrors and the spacing of the mirrors. We know the cavity forms longitudinal modes or allowed frequencies, and the gain medium itself is composed of energy levels, and we write differential equations to describe how electrons move up and down in energy with various pumps and excitations and intensities inside the cavity. Um, we get a operation, at least we're assuming, on a single longitudinal mode, which means that although the spectrum the gain medium puts out by itself is very broad, and we start to combine it with cavity feedback, it becomes very narrow. And all of this is described through the Einstein equations, which tell us how electrons and photons interact with each other inside this gain medium. And really what we're going to be looking at today is the interaction of the gain medium, the differential equation charts, right here with essentially the mirrors because we've got to be able to basically fulfill two conditions. If the mirrors are totally reflective, no light's going to get out of the laser and it's going to be useful, useless. But if the mirrors have too much transmission, a very low reflectivity, the feedback mechanism won't work and the laser won't even operate. And that's what we're going to look at today. And I'm afraid the discussion in Verdian spreads itself over several chapters and it's a little bit complicated. So I'm going to try to uh, go through a little bit of his derivation and end with some common sense things about this. Uh, keep in mind, of course, that you really have to describe this with differential equations describing the whole laser, which we haven't gotten to yet and we'll get to in the next couple of days. So we know that as the intensity goes through the gain medium, we have a differential equation describing the increase or decrease in intensity. It depends on the cross-section, the populations, and we can write all of this as a simple gain coefficient, um, and that our intensity should exponentially increase as it goes to the cavity with some e to the gamma z, and we have a weak intensity going in and a strong intensity coming out. And this is all calculated from levels, and you know all of this stuff. And, and we can calculate the cross-section from the Einstein coefficient and the line shape. This is all review for you. Uh, what Verdian does in Chapter 8.3, um, uh, one other thing, that uh, we can ignore this line shape term, essentially set it equal to 1, uh, provided we operate on a single longitudinal mode that's near the peak of the line shape, g of nu. And so although... I'm going to write g of nu as I go through this. I'm going to set this equal to 1 later because we know it's operating on a single longitudinal mode. Um, so what Verdian does is he says, OK, this gain medium is operating in the steady state. Uh, the populations aren't changing anymore. The intensity is not increasing or changing as a function of time. And that allows me to set all the time derivatives equal to 0. If I do this, I can go through, and with a lot of algebra you'll find in, in section 8.3 of your book, I can come up with some uh, a simple equation, essentially, that talks about how the intensity at the, the single line frequency nu, so we're at some frequency nu here, and we're talking about the intensity just at the peak here in frequency, changes as a function of distance, and I have a solution to this differential equation of how my intensity changes as a function of the distance z inside the cavity. And this equation right here depends on the gain, the saturation intensity, which is given by this equation right here. And remember, the saturation intensity is the intensity at which the light inside the cavity depopulates the upper state just as fast as the decay time. So the, the depopulation due to the decay time and the depopulation due to stimulated emission from light are the same at the saturation intensity. And, and you can go through and derive this. Verdian does it in the book. And if you work through the math, you'll come out with that.